Wouldn't it be great if you could enjoy a family favorite like mashed potatoes without all the guilt and all the carbs? Well, stick around because in this video, I have a recipe for you that will do just that. So this week, what I have for you is one of my staple recipes. I make this probably once a week because it's so easy and it's delicious. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. We're gonna make cauliflower mashed potatoes. And in this dish, I actually usually add garlic, so I'll call it garlic mashed potatoes. Now you can see in front of me, I have cauliflower, so I clearly am not dealing with potatoes. The trick to this recipe is swapping out potatoes for cauliflower. And why would we do that? Well, potatoes, not that they're invariably the worst food on the planet, but they do have a lot of carbohydrate in them. So not that we can't eat carbs, but if you're one who's trying to cut down the carb intake in your food plan, swapping potatoes for uh, cauliflower is a great uh, way to do that. So a cup of cauliflower, three measly carbs, a cup of potatoes, about 30 carbs. So let's get started. I have a head of cauliflower. You go to the grocery store, your local farmer's market, get your head of cauliflower. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off these stems. And the reason I'm showing this to you is I've had some folks over the years tell me, you know, Lisa, that cauliflower mashed potato sounds good, but I've never cooked with cauliflower. What do I do? So for this uh, video today, I just wanted to start by showing you what I'm doing. And so I'm taking all of these leaves, these green leaves off of the cauliflower. And so this will just take a second. We'll just go around. I take a little, you know, serrated knife here and I just get all these uh, leaves off of it. Just makes it easier for washing so I like to do this beforehand just cut all those or kind of pull them off of there and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the sink and we're gonna give this a good wash I once had someone tell me if you see bugs on your food it means that it's alive so that's a good thing so I always think about that every once and again when I see a little bug or something on my food so I'm gonna go wash this off Alrighty, we have our cleaned head of cauliflower. Now all you do is take your knife and what I find easiest is just kind of cutting around the core here and you're gonna get your, your uh, uh, cauliflower florets off of it. So you're just gonna continue to cut around your cauliflower head and you're gonna keep picking off your uh, little cauliflower bulbs here. So really, preparation of cauliflower, if you've never worked with it, is really pretty simple. Um, just washing it, take the leaves off, and cut it into pieces. So what we're going to do is just finish this up here. All right, so then we got all of our heads of our cauliflower. Now the next thing we're going to do for the cauliflower mashed potato is we're going to steam this. And there's a couple of ways you could do that. All right, so with the magic of video, a steamer popped up. Look at that. So here's what we're gonna do, folks. We're gonna take our cauliflower and we're gonna pop it in our steamer. So this is actually a, I think they call this one a rice cooker. Actually, it says handy, handy steamer. So if you haven't seen these, this, this is honestly probably 15 years old. Um, it's a little basket that you have. You put water in the bottom, okay? Water goes in the bottom and this is your basket where you could put like um, herbs or spices or anything if you wanted to. Sometimes I do, in this case I'm not. I'm just putting water in the bottom, and then I have my steamer basket, and what I do is I just pop my cauliflower in here, and I'm gonna put this on cook for 15 minutes. And what it's gonna do is that water is going to come in here, and it's gonna steam that cauliflower, and you're gonna have beautifully cooked cauliflower every time. I love doing it this way with a steamer like this because it's hands off. So I have 15 minutes where I could be making another side dish or if I need to get some meat in the oven or something like that. Um, or just do errands around the house. You know, there's always things to do and pick up around the house. So we're gonna set it and so to speak, kind of forget it, if you will. Uh, that's usually what I do. And when I hear the ding of it going off, then I know it's done and we pick it up from there. So I'm gonna set this for 15 minutes. Depending on how you cook the cauliflower, you could um, boil it, you could do, uh, there's different steamer apparatuses out there you can utilize, somewhere between 12 and 17 minutes. So what we're gonna do is when this is cooked for 15 minutes, I'm gonna come back and poke it with the fork and see if it's cooked enough. You don't want it too mushy, but you don't want it too hard either. So I'm gonna give this 15 minutes, I've done it enough times that I know in this one that'll do it, and we'll pick it up from there. 
So this is going to be set for 15 minutes and while that is steaming, make sure you head to your fridge and take out your cream cheese and your butter. If you don't have cream cheese on hand, you can also use sour cream, but the cream cheese and butter is the recipe I'm going with today and you want to make sure those are softened. So take those out before you uh, turn on your cauliflower and they'll be nice at room temperature for you when we return. All right, so the cauliflower is cooked for 15 minutes. And it is all set. It's not too mushy. It's still firm to the touch. And I want to make sure I get all the water out of it here. We don't want any of that water to make it mushier than it needs to be. So I'm going to give it a good little shake. And what we're going to do is just pop the cauliflower in our food processor. And depending on how much cauliflower you're making, you might need to do two batches of it. I'll see how much I can get in this one batch here. Wow, this stuff is hot. So we're going to go ahead and just get it into our food processor and I like to save a little bit of room and not jam pack this thing because you're going to put some more ingredients in it. All right. So that's what we're going to do right now. And what I'm going to grab is the first thing I'm going to put in is um, four tablespoons. I have some organic uh, grass fed butter here. So that's about half a stick of butter. So we're going to throw that in there. Then I'm using cream cheese, and so my fancy way to measure up how much cream cheese is I take the cream cheese packet and I split it in half. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and put that right into the food processor as well. Kind of stick that in there. Kind of will start melting already onto the cauliflower. Then what we're looking for is we are going to take some seasonings and put it in. Now today what I'm going to do is garlic mashed potatoes and so we're adding garlic obviously now ideally we could take a fresh head of garlic like so and then i'm going to use about two cloves and i'm going to dice it up but the other way we could do it if you're saving time you can also use a store-bought kind of minced garlic and so if i have don't have time during the week to you know futz or i just need it to get done even quicker i'll just go ahead and get minced garlic and i'll put maybe about two teaspoons into um, the garlic mash if you do not like um, garlic you don't have to put it in you could totally make this without you could just use the cauliflower uh, with some ingredients like the butter and mix it up and just have it that way um, but the garlic adds a nice touch if you want to do garlic mashed potatoes so I'm gonna take the garlic here and I'm just gonna kind of smash them whoops I dropped one five second rule so I have it I saved it it's good we're gonna take it and we're gonna just smash it again and I'm going to take the skin off. Why am I doing that? I want to take the skin off of it so I can cut it. So, it smells great. If you like garlic, you definitely love it when you cut up some fresh garlic. All right, so let me grab a knife here and we will get to chopping our two cloves of garlic. Okay, two peeled cloves of garlic. And this is going into the food processor, so I just kind of give it a rough chop. I don't have to get too fancy with how well I cut it. This just adds a great little punch of flavor to the cauliflower mashed potatoes. And keep in mind when we're saying mashed potatoes, of course they're not. It's cauliflower mashed. Let's take this here, toss that in there. All right, then we're going to add some rosemary. And you can add a teaspoon of dry rosemary or you could do fresh. Um, I happen to have fresh around, sometimes I don't, I use the dry. So again, depending on what you have available, um, you could do either one. And I'm gonna just dump the rosemary in there. I'm gonna use the dried one today. Although I have fresh, I probably could use fresh too, right? And save time, we're gonna get moving along here on it. And then the last thing I'm gonna put in, again is optional, is to put some chives in. Chives have a nice little punch of onion flavor to it. And you could, again, totally optional. You don't have to put chives in, but it just gives it another little flavor punch. So I had some fresh chives. I have a little herb garden outside my, um, pretty much you can grow an herb garden in any window that gets light. So I have a little herb garden where I have three or four little pots of, ch of um, herbs, one of them being chives. And if you're worried, you know, what am I going to do with chives? Maybe you're going to buy a packet at the grocery store. You're like, I'm never going to go through a packet. Why would I buy it? You know, chives actually freeze pretty well. So you could take the chives you don't use, put it in a freezer bag, put it in the freezer, and then pull the chives out as you need them so that you're not wasting your chives. So I already have some diced up here, so about a tablespoon or so of chives, again, to your flavor preference. 
And that's really about it. We got the cream cheese, the butter, the rosemary, and the chives. And let's not forget about our garlic in there. So we have that all in there. We're gonna pop our lid on, and we are going to blend this ooey gooey goodness together. Now, the trick here is, and this is pretty much the only trick of this recipe, is you don't want to over blend your ingredients. And I have some extra cauliflower here that I couldn't fit in. So I'm gonna, you see I just hit it for a few seconds and got it kind of mixed up. And I'm gonna put this extra cauliflower in here so I don't waste any of my delicious goodness. And I'm just gonna kind of coat this, uh, grab the sides a little bit, okay? So now I'm just gonna hit this on the blend mode for another couple seconds, maybe five, 10 seconds. Um, so you get it to the right consistency. So, and that's probably maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Let's see. It kind of just depends. I'll usually like pop the lid open and check it every few seconds just to make sure it's just right. Like Pulse it for a few more minutes. Um, let's give it another little stir here. Um, the issue with over mixing it is cauliflower is a high water content vegetable. So if you over blend it, a lot of water gets released. Then you have a little bit more of a watery potato deal. And so we don't want to monkey with that. So let's just go ahead and blend it up. ready to move on and serve this puppy. All right, so there you have it. It's mixed to the right consistency. Super easy recipe, a staple in my home. I make this so often because it's quick. What did it take me, 20 minutes? I steamed some cauliflower, dumped it in a blender with some butter and cream cheese and some herbs like, uh, what did I use today, chives and a little rosemary, a little garlic in there. A wonderful combination of flavors that taste delicious. This is an easy side dish you can add to chicken, seafood, steak, whatever you care for, and it is just awesome. You are gonna love it, and I really hope you enjoy. Now get busy embracing your tasty life.